welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM is gearing up to roll out a new virtual wheeling platform that could unlock renewable supply to companies with operations spread across the country. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the development. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is ESCOM proposing and how is the platform being developed? Yes, well, Eskom and Vodacom actually have been working for the last 15 months on this virtual wheeling concept. So we know traditional wheeling is where there's basically a, a bilateral relationship between a generator and the consumer and a power purchase agreement is developed. And then there's wheeling charges that uh, either the municipality, mostly Eskom, charges uh, for, for the use of the grid. So what's being developed is a, a platform, it's really a contractual platform, a financial product, where they can take a number of multiple generators, IPPs, uh, producing renewable electricity, and supply to multiple off-takers through a buyer. And that buyer can be a corporate such as Vodacom, or generally I think it's going to be a trader that's going to play that role. So the, the idea is really that you can get all the way to the last mile. The last mile is often in a municipal uh, distribution area, so it's not limited to uh, Eskim, and it also goes all the way to a low voltage uh, uh, last mile. So this is really what's being developed, um, and it's really being uh, between Eskim and Mezzanine, which is a, a Vodacom sub subsidiary, they've been going through the architecture of this. And the architecture is very much to try and leave existing billing systems and existing electricity supply agreements intact, not to mess with those and to have an overlay uh, whereby the contracting model, the buyer puts up the money basically and overpays Eskom through a single bill and then uh, gets a refund back from Eskom that is then used to, to make everyone whole in the process. So it's, it's, it's complicated, but it's also trying to navigate uh, what is very important for both Eskom and the municipalities is this issue of revenue neutrality, because we know that uh, municipalities in Eskom rely on this, these wheeling charges. And the alternative for a lot of these businesses would be to set up their own generation inside the distribution, and that would ro rob the, both Eskom and the uh, the municipal distributor of revenue entirely. So this keeps people on the grid and also now allows businesses to, uh, to try and decarbonize. Why is there demand for this product? <clears throat> well, basically a lot of businesses in South Africa, I mean, uh, they just have a very w widely dispersed facility footprint. So take, for instance, Vodacom, 15,000 base stations, they're on, sometimes on fairly small sites. So you can't put up solar panels and, and uh, well, sufficient, there's not a sufficient space really, uh, or rooftop solar to, to uh, manage that operation, as well as these are 24-7 operations. So a solar panel wouldn't do it. Uh, you'd need batteries, but you would need really large batteries as well. Um, and really, in terms of a system perspective, to decarbonize, it's better if you can wheel across the grid uh, from a multiple of generators, being some solar, in the, and we know that's going to provide that uh, electricity during the day, and then also to integrate wind and storage in the process, so that you can basically, a lot of businesses listed on the JSE have quite aggressive decarbonization goals, so they want to get to net zero re relatively quickly much quicker than South Africa's, say, big country ambition of 2050. Someone like Vodacom wants to get there in 2030. So to do that, they need, they can't rely on their own rooftop solar. It's just not going to work. So there's a demand for this because of this decarbonization. People want green electricity. So this is a way of contracting for green electricity. And it's also a way of unlocking a new RPPs, renewables RPPs, because they'll have a bigger addressable market. So at the moment, the addressable market is really around mines and smelters where you have land and you put in these large uh, wind and solar systems or you wheel them uh, from uh, high sort of wind areas, as is in the case of, say, Sassel uh, from the Eastern Cape, and you wheel that to, say, to Secunda and through a bilateral PPA. But that's not really fit for purpose for 
for uh, companies that have, say, banks with many branches or Vodacoms or restaurant groups, for instance, or gym groups. You know, it's not really on-site renewables is just not going to get them to 100% uh, renewable energy in the time frames they're talking about. So it's really about using the system, unlocking private balance sheets at the top end to do the generation and using the existing grid infrastructure and keeping hopefully Eskom distribution, Eskom transmission and the municipalities whole in the process. When is this likely to be implemented on a commercial scale? So at the moment Mezzanine, Vodacom and Eskom are, are validating and testing this in Midrand. You know, there's a big campus uh, that Vodacom has in Midrand that's got quite a lot of solar generation. And so they're testing this concept. So uh, Vodacom will be buying, obviously, electricity from Eskom because it's a, Midrand's also an Eskom distribution area. And uh, they'll be using also their uh, solar generation and pushing that into the network to supply about 700 or so towers, uh, Vodacom towers. And they're in the process of seeing how that works and validating the system. So they've got a, it's basically an IT overlay. And the big thing that unlocks us is smart meters. So you need smart meters, time of use, data needs to come in. So they're testing this uh, and they've been testing it for some time. And then there's the, the bill that's generated through the, the system. Now the settlement system, it doesn't have to go through the mezzanine system, it can be multiple and we probably will see a number of IT systems that are probably introduced over time. But basically the settlement system uh, it gives you a, a bill that uh, Vodacom will then pay and then the IPP will get uh, remunerated through that buyer or the buyer is really the one at risk as I understand it in the process. And uh, so it's uh, quite advanced but there's a lot of areas that they're wanting to test. So it looks like really Eskom would like to roll this out to other customers uh, that are wanting to use this to decarbonize their businesses probably towards the end of next year. So there's still more testing and validation, still more IT development. And, and obviously, you know, to get to this point, there's going to be a need for a lot of uh, rollout of smart meters across facilities that want to, say, banks or, as I mentioned earlier, gym groups or whoever's going to use this. And there's going to also be a need for this whole new class of electricity uh, supply industry uh, individual or company, uh, an aggregator and a trader. I think that's going to be, those are going to be very important. And we're seeing a number of those have already been registered with or licensed with the um, uh, National Energy Regulator of South Africa. But I think we're going to see even more of those emerging in the next months and years. How would it seek to navigate the municipal debt issue? This is going to be the, the very tricky part of this virtual wheeling because Eskom will only contract with municipalities in good standing. And we know that that's a problem at the moment in South Africa. We know that Eskom's owed about 65 billion rand at the moment, plus more than that, by municipalities um, in arrear debt. It's about 136 of our 250 so municipalities are having problems with Eskom, so it's a big portion. So how are we going to navigate that, I think, is still the question. And how to make everyone a whole in that process financially is, is a big question. And uh, I think that there's a lot of work going on at NECOM, the uh, National Energy Crisis Committee, to see how we can do that. So I think that there will be a trial and error type approach to this. But basically, it's very much in the interests of the municipalities, and I, as I mentioned earlier, to keep these businesses grid connect. These are the good payers, the corporates that are going to be leading this charge. And the corporates would like to use tools like this because it's, they'll contract with a trader and it's not their core business to do electricity <laughs> and getting into 20 year PPAs and they can't do it for these smaller facilities anyway. So it's in their interest to have these sort of intermediaries and have ready made products that can help them decarbonize as quickly as possible and in the municipality's interest to keep these customers connected. So to get to some sort of relationship with Eskom, this could help, I think, facilitate, grease the wheels of dealing with the arrears. Whether they'll be able to get there immediately and whether there'll have to be some accommodation, I don't know. I imagine there will have to be some accommodation 
And that's, I think, going to be you know, learning as we're doing. And I think the launch of this process, and it has to be spread beyond just those good paying municipalities. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense for these businesses. And it's going to mean it's going to be very hard for businesses that have these uh, very wanting to use virtual wheeling to decarbonize, to use this product. So I think there's going to have to be give and take, and there's going to be have to be some risk taken along the way. Who takes this risk? I think the trader is going to need to take this risk major. And the, the main thing there is they need to know that they'll know their market better. So they'll be able to blend this risk. One, blend the generation profile to match the demand of these customers downstream, and then also then blend the municipality risk on the other end. So they're going to be having, they're going to play a big role uh, in this, uh, and what premium that's going to add is going to be important. But the good news there is that so a lot of this new generation coming in is coming in very competitively priced relative to especially the municipal tariffs, you know, which have a premium on the Eskom wholesale price. So I think there is a way, but it's going to be very, very difficult. And it is the major risk to having a mass uptake of this virtual wheeling platform and product is this municipal area debt and the, the credit risk that these municipalities pose. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of Engineering News Daily emailed newsletter.